chess friends and welcome to Yazarov's chess channel and welcome to my best chess games of all time series. So in this series we follow the best of the best, the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and today I wanted to show you the mortal game played by Rashid Gibiatovic Neshmedinov. So this game was played in 1958 uh, with the black pieces against left Paul Gajewski. Rashid Neshmedinov won this tournament, it was played in this Russian championship and uh, it was really a great tournament I think for Neshmedinov, he w won the tournament with one point of head, uh, with 13 points out of this possible 19, so he played a really great tournament back in 1958 and uh, Rashid Neshmedinov's uh, playing style was similar to Mikhail Tal's uh, playing style, uh, he played really this attacking uh, attacking games, so really this uh, brutal, immortal uh, queen sacrifices, rooks sacrifices, positional sacrifices, pawn breakthrough sacrifices and similar ideas just in order to keep an active game and that's why he was really one of the best chess players in history. Uh, but unfortunately, well, um, Rashid N the Nezhmedinov never gained this uh, Grandmaster title because uh, there were two reasons behind it. So, first of all, he was born in a Tatar family and uh, he wasn't allowed to play uh, outside the uh, Soviet Federation. So, he couldn't compete maybe on some tournaments like in the USA, maybe in Yugos or former Yugoslavia and many, many more. So, he couldn't compete like, I don't know, this best uh, Soviet player so uh, he he had the the, cir the same circumstances like the top grandmasters from from the Soviet Union. So uh, I think it was really an unfair unfair decision of this uh, Soviet Federation to not allow him to compete in this. Uh, best level and I think he would be a grandmaster for sure but the other uh, reason is also that uh, well um, Rashid Nezhmedinov always stuck to this uh, playing style that's why uh, he was always fun to watch because he played always these tactical battles he uh, didn't want to play these positional battles and that's why against stronger opponents who had maybe a better positional understanding he had troubles to play against and then if the position gets too positional I think he did like these types of positions but uh, as said, one of the best tacticians uh, in the chess history he really was so when you allowed him to get a tempo, when you allowed him to get an attacking formation with all of his pieces, then basically it was game over. So as said, he was playing like Mikhail Tal and that's why he became also his uh, second. Uh, he was... Um, he helped uh, Mikhail Tal to gain uh, gain his world championship uh, by helping him in order to get a better preparation in some particular opens and back in the 60s uh, back in the 50s uh, the King's Indian was uh, very popular and uh, Mikhail Tal was also a very very good player in the King's Indian and you see also in this game by Neshmetinov he played well, it wasn't basically uh, King's Indian, but it was a uh, more aggressive line uh, in the so-called Ukrainian variation of the Old Indian. But uh, the, the game would transpose into the so-called King's Indian setup. There are these uh, King's Indian setups in which you are creating this uh, immediate flank attack with some F5, F4 moves and then you coordinate the, at the attack only on the king side and uh, Mikhail Tal was really playing great in this types of position and also uh, Rashid Nezhmetinov and this was really he, one of his best chess plays uh, in history. He, he played against uh, Lev Polgaevsky as I said and uh, be prepared this was really something else. So let's see Lev Pol Polgaevsky against Nezhmetinov 1958 D4 here by Pol Polgaevsky f6 c4 we have now d6 and now knight on, uh, knight on c3 this is now of course the preparation to play the move e4 and going into a calm line with the move knight on f3 but Rashid Nezhmedinov uh, you see now his playing style he plays immediately the move e5 uh, uh, very aggressive uh, even in move three three so already challenging white center and uh, there is now this line if you try d takes e5 uh, d takes e5 queen on d8 king takes on d8 and after knight on f3 it's really not such a problem to be in with this king in the center because you can play knight from um, uh, b to d2 and after potential g3 i don't know or even e4 you can play simply the move uh, c6 and this move prevents now this knight to jump on d5 we can hide a little bit with our king here on the, on on uh, c7 then play very active with the bishop on b4 so okay white has the advantage here but i think you solve the problems in an early stage of the game and that's why left polugaevsky played here the move e4 didn't want to go into this uh, direct line wanted to maybe stay with some more pieces on the board and play the move e4 
And now uh, Nash Bedino uses this moment because uh, after e takes d4, queen takes on d4, knight on c6, we have gained the tempo. Although uh, white has this uh, central control with this knight and with these two pawns, uh, building this so called Moroxy bind uh, setup. But uh, you see, you have to retreat with your queen. Uh, meanwhile, black has developed uh, pardon, black has developed here uh, two minor pieces, so can go into a fast fast development style here. So queen on uh, d2 was played now. Uh, we have g6, uh, b3, uh, of course uh, white wants to compete uh, with the star square bishop and launch his common flank attack and uh, try to attack this fianchetto. It's a common idea when you're playing the fianchetto style from black's perspective, so white is uh, trying sometimes to build this early flank attack. Bishop on g7, bishop on b2, chasm. So nothing special so far, uh, slight advantage here for white. And now bishop on d3. This comes also with the idea to play something like if the position allows it, f4, then this bishop would also attack this uh, h7 pawn. But Rashid uh, doesn't allow uh, these types of scenarios. He played simply very actively with his knight, knight on g4. And remember, um, uh, you shouldn't... Uh, play sometimes with your pieces uh, with the same piece twice in the opening but if you uh, recognize so with the move knight on c6 Rash Rashid already forced uh, the queen to retreat so basically Rashid uh, uh, get the tempo in an early stage of the game so that's why this knight on uh, g4 idea is uh, really a great idea now we want to immediately launch our flank attack with the move f5 like in the common king's indian setups in this orthodox variations now we want to open the f-file. Knight from g2, e2 was played, and you see now very active play here, queen on uh, queen on h4. And uh, maybe now Lev Pogaeski made the slight inaccuracy, he played the knight on g3. Maybe g3 uh, is much more powerful, then you have to maybe trade off the queens, and the position is much more simplified, you can play something like f5, but now I think uh, white can castle here and again uh, this game is an equal game still we have a good uh, control of this d5 so uh, basically uh, white will coordinate uh, his attack around this outpost at knight on d5 uh, attacking maybe the c7 weakness and with this queen soft to board it would be a simplified position so here knight on g3 uh, as said is a little bit uh, well passive because now uh, knight uh, Knight on e5 was played by, by Nezhmetinov, fixing the knights, you see these knights are building also very powerful central control, and here uh, castling was played, and uh, now uh, you see there there is this common king's, king's Indian attack with the move f5. Uh, the, the problem uh, now from uh, White's perspective is that uh, you have also uh, this bishop on d3 under fire. You see th this uh, knight is attacking the pawn, uh, pardon me, the bishop. If you try something like e takes f5, then of course we first take knight takes on d3. After queen takes on d3, we have bishop takes on f5, knight takes, and now rook takes on f5. You cannot immediately, of course, place the knight on, on d5 because you lose the bishop. But now simply building up on the f file is perfectly fine we have possibilities to play bishop on d4 maybe attacking this f2 weakness so again uh, this is maybe a slightly advantage here for, for black so after the move uh, uh, f3 uh, f5 f3 was played by left polgaeski and this leaves now rashid nezhmedinov immediately the opportunity uh, to go into this common king's indian attack first of all he played bishop on h6 it's also a common idea in the king's indian uh, to uh, change the direction of this dark square bishop because now after the move f3 we have here this uh, e3 weakness and uh, this would be uh, something that uh, black uh, it's is black's advantage uh, and white has to retreat now so uh, queen on d1 you see the queen uh, uh, gets back on the, on the first rank, uh, it's not uh, good, and now uh, Rashid played simply f4. Maybe a better uh, idea is to play immediately bishop on e3, uh, you have to retreat with the knight, uh, with the king, and then play the move f4, attacking the knight here on uh, on g3, and now after knight on, uh, knight on e2, we can play our common king's Indian attack with some potential uh, g5 and g4 ideas. In the maybe white can try knight on d5 but we would simply push forward here if you try g3 f takes g3 and now after knight takes and g3 we you see we ha we can also trade off the star square bishops in the next move we could also try to attack this uh, f3 weakness so again it's not such a good position for white so here f4 uh, played by rashid uh, not playing this uh, bishop on e3 idea but okay this 
uh, pawn is our, now our main space advantage on the fourth rank so you see we have occupied already our opponent's position the queen is on the fourth rank uh, really dancing a little bit around the white king we have also this advanced pawn which is the the more important thing is that this pawn is uh, supported so it cannot be attacked uh, you cannot uh, remove the space advantage that Rashid has built and uh, if you see this position now it's really static that uh, the, uh, the the position in the stator is compact so no pawn moves are possible here uh, these knights are really cre creating a perfect blockade because white would love maybe to open the position with the move e5 and then liberate this light square bishop but again you have to first retreat with the bishop then remove the knight and it's too much uh, too much uh, to handle here for for white this knights as i said are building a perfect blockade and now when the uh, uh, the center is static when the center uh, is immobile then it's possible to create a flank attack these are the main strategic elements of flank attack so first fixing the center then creating the, the flank attack uh, after the move f4 of course knight from uh, g2 e2 was played and you see now simply pushing forward not uh, even to uh, calculate you don't have to calculate so much just uh, creating very very annoying stuff with potential g4 moves knight on d5 was played and now uh, g4 um, knight on c7 doesn't bring you so much it seems uh, that you have gained a pawn you can uh, attack the rook but it's not about rooks anymore you can simply play g3 continue to push and here if you try h3 to pass through here uh, the common king's indian sacrifice this is really a common common uh, tactic in the king's indian to simply uh, sacrifice the life for bishop but after uh, g takes h3 here we have uh, queen on h3 and it's game over you are forced to give up maybe a rook here on uh, f2 just in order to prevent your opponent from checkmating you and then try maybe to defend the, with the queen but here it's game over for for black so as said here uh, instead of this knight on c7 g3 was played by left paul Gajewski, and now uh, we have f takes g3 we have uh, h takes g3 and now queen on h3 sneaking in little uh, really uh, around this white king and there is this problem again our main idea is to play the move bishop on e3 but uh, that cannot happen because the knight is protecting this e3 and that's why uh, white can never take the spawn on uh, c7 because then bishop on e3 is very very dangerous so f4 played by uh, rashid uh, pardon me by paul Gajewski, and now bishop on d3 uh, bishop on e6 um, tricky tricky stuff uh, by uh, rashid nespedinov if you if you try to take f takes e5 here uh, then bishop takes on d5 you see if you take then bishop on e3 as i said this is uh, the main the main problem you can maybe uh, cover with the rook but bishop on uh, f2 and it's game over so uh, in this position after um, bishop takes on d5 uh, or you you don't have to immediately maybe to uh, take after f takes e5 if here uh, e takes d5 then bishop on e3 here if you cover again uh, this checkmate so if you try here something like bishop on c1 uh, to cover uh, the star square diagonal then knight on uh, e5 is very dangerous if you try to take off this uh, bishop it's not a problem first we have knight on f3 uh, you have to of course uh, move the king and now bish uh, queen takes on uh, h6 and again we have some discovered attack possibilities in the continuation if you try to take e takes d5 then rook on e8 opening also the, this e file now this uh, queen this knight and these two rooks are building a too powerful attack here if you try to retreat uh, with your rook and try to liberate maybe a square for a king then uh, knight on d2 is uh, very very dangerous you have to go with your king here on on e1 but now queen on uh, uh, queen on d3 e3 is very dangerous uh, because uh, now the immediate checkmate threat is here present here on f2 queen takes on d2 can be played but now rook on uh, g1 and it would be a forced checkmate so you see you cannot uh, take with the knight because of this very annoying pin so as said here uh, uh, in this position uh the position is uh, got really complicated here in the center with this uh, potential uh, trade-offs and now or uh, lev pulgaevsky didn't take this uh, knight on e4 he retreated with the bishop on c2 and now rook on uh, rook on f7 uh, there is this double function about this rook first of all we are covering um, this uh, c7 weakness but we are trying also to double up the rooks here on the 
on the F, F file and we're waiting finally that white will open the position with potential uh, uh, F takes E5 moves. If you try F takes E5 again immediately then uh, bishop on D5 again you see the queen on D5 doesn't bring you so much because it doesn't come with this direct attack uh, against the king so if white would have gained the tempo here with the, with the check then it would be a favorable game for white but here with this move rook on F2 again the same idea here bishop on E3 and it's game over so you can never take this uh, you can never take this knight on, on e5 and uh, Rashid Nashbedino recognized this tactical possibility through the whole game here uh, after uh, rook on f f7 king on f2 was played and now um, it uh, the p position becomes really really dangerous for white's king we have the so-called king hunt and this king hunt is always fun to watch because when when the king tries to escape then you should really attack the king try to open the position against your opponent's king and now uh, Rashid played queen on h2 of course king on e3 now the king is really endangered here in the center and now bishop on d5 finally removing this key defender you see that this knight was very very dangerous here around uh around uh, blacks uh, around black spawns and it was also this key defender which could maybe defend the king somehow but now after c takes d5 rashid played knight on b4 and now comes uh this critical moment of the game uh here um uh left pole Gajewski played the move rook on h1 attacking the the queen and uh, you have now several options if you uh, remove uh, if you retreat with the queen uh, then the king can escape and maybe uh, this uh, game will end in a draw or maybe even uh, winning for white but here uh, Nezbedino found a very very nice tactical idea he played the move uh, rook takes on f4 let's see now this possible continuations if you take the with the knight on f4 then uh, queen on g3 and you see you lose the uh, knight and uh, let's see king on e2 you lose the knight on f4 if you try to compete here on the dark squares then queen on uh, g2 is perfectly fine if you retreat here with the king on e1 then bishop on g3 and it's game over here uh, in this position if you try bishop on d4 to compete again uh, then queen on f3 you see again the same idea and now you lose even the rook here and again it's game over so in the position here uh, if you try uh, to play king on e1 then bishop on uh, g3 again uh, this possible uh, the, this possible checkmate threat so you see after rook on f4 uh, we have now the problems uh, uh, the, the, the king is really endangered endangered here with this discovered attack possibilities uh, by, by this bishop on h6 and now uh, simply Pelogajewski took uh, took the queen and it was really a great queen sacrifice now we, now we have this uh, tactical preparations here rook on f3 uh, creating double the double check uh, there is only one square for for the king and it uh, and it's the square d4 here so you see this king is really uh, endangered in the center and now uh, we should really try to get more attackers into the game here bishop on g7 was played and uh, now uh, Pelogajski tried to move a4 uh, it was really a mistake but uh, there is maybe this line with knight on g1 you can attack uh, the rook uh, it seems that you can escape and uh, bring some other defenders into the game but now first we can play something like c5 after d takes c6 we have a knight uh, on d3 we can attack uh, here this uh, king with the uh, discovered check if you try e5 then bishop on e5 if you retreat here with the king then b5 is very tricky if you go with the king here then rook on uh, b8 you see how these pieces are really dancing around white's king if king on a4 you see knight on b b2 with this check and here if you try king on a3 then again uh, this very very tricky check and now it will be basically game over because you have to uh, go here with the king and again we would have some uh, attacking possibilities so uh, here in this position if you try uh, king on c4 then again b5 uh, if you try uh, here king on uh, king on a5 uh, to escape here not on a4 then knight on c6 is very dangerous you have to again go with your king on a4 now rook on b4 again uh, king on a3 but now bishop on b2 and it's again checkmate so uh, here uh, in this position after rook on g3 if your opponent tries again to uh, attack your rook then uh, rook on uh, f3 again if your opponent tries to uh, 
do this perpetual attacks then a knight on uh, e3 uh, d3 again with the discovered attack here if you try to escape with the king again on c4 the knight on b2 again with the check and the fork on the queen so here you can take but here a5 is very tricky if you try king on a3 then you see b5 uh, with the preparation to play the move b4 and it would be game over so you cannot play this move b4 for yourself because the rook has cut off here this connection and you cannot advance the pawn and secure your king so if you can try maybe queen on d4 but again uh, b4 is unpreventable if you try king on b5 here in this position not to go on on on, on a4 or similar ideas we have here rook on uh, c3 tricky tricky stuff you see uh, now again with the preparation to play the move c6 and uh, similar ideas or we can try rook on f4 and again it would be game over here for 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 white so uh, great, great attack by Rashid Nezhmedinov here. As said, a4 was played and now uh, c5. Uh, so uh, Lev Pulgajski didn't play this move. Knight on g g1 with an attack on the rook. So here c5. Uh, of course, black uh, has attacked the king and white has to take now the pawn with Anpasan. We have um, e, uh, d takes uh, c6, we have b takes c6, and again the threat is to play c5 and creating a checkmate. So that's why bishop on um, uh, bishop on uh, d3 has to be played in order to escape with the king here on uh, c3. Maybe then after that on uh, c2 or d2 if the position allows it. But then of course, Anishmetinov played first knight on uh, d3 with the discovered attack. Here we have to play. Uh, king on c4 now we have uh, simply forward d5 we have uh, uh, e takes d5 now c takes d5 you have only one square the uh, king on b5 but now rook on b8 you have again only one square knight on uh, a5 and now knight on c6 and it was game over because you have only one square you have knight on a6 and you get checkmated by this other knight Whew, great attack, great king hunt by Nezhmedinov. This was really one of his best chess games in history and uh, he was really, as you can see, a very great attacker. He had, uh, didn't allow his opponent to breathe in this game and sacrificed the, uh, the queen here on h2. You see, these pieces were too passive. The activity of this bishop with the discovered attack possibilities was, was too much to handle here for white. And that's why this game really deserves to be on our list of the best chess games of all time. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed this game a lot. I have watched it now many, many uh, times and was, it was really, really one, uh, one game that you should know by heart. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this game. Meanwhile, well, you can watch my other uh, best chess games of all times with some more uh, Rashid Nezhmedinov, Mikhail Tal, Gary Kasparov games and many, many more. And you can also watch my uh, commented chess games played by computers in which I show you the best chess games that are played by Stockfish, Lila C0, Alpha Zero, and uh, these types of games. And you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content. Thanks you for watching, guys, and chess is the best, of course.